Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm gonna be trying to tackle this Audi A3's grumbling rear end. So it's a 2009 Audi A3, 1.9 TDI, Sportback, so it's 8PA model code. It's done 184,000 miles and the speakers have stopped working recently. That'll be coming in a separate video but the speakers stopping working uh, made the grumbling wheel bearings at the back of the car much more obvious. And so today I am going to be changing the wheel bearings. I'm also going to be doing the rear brake discs and pads. The discs need to come off to do the wheel bearing anyway. They're not looking too clever and the pads are quite low as well. So I thought I'd do the whole lot in one go. So I'll get the car jacked up on axle stands, then I'll, I'll uh, give the wheel a spin and see if I can uh, demonstrate to you the noise that I'm making. I figured it was pretty much pointless to try and do a video of me driving along on some uh, really smooth tarmac so you could hear it because I, I, I don't really feel that the noise would come through on video. Uh, but you can hear it just about, it's quite subtle, but you can hear it when you jack the car up and spin the wheels. There's absolutely no play in the bearings. Uh, but they're, they're clearly noisy, so they need changing. And I guess, you know, 184,000 miles, that's not a bad innings for a wheel bearing, is it? So these are the parts I'm gonna be using. Uh, so it comes with a, a new a dust cap and a new bolt. These are pretty tight, so new one every time. We'll get to that a bit later. pads I've used Techstar brake stuff a few times before I quite like it the the discs these were quite reasonably priced but they're also quite uh, quite nice because they're coated so they don't go quite as completely rusty and horrible on the non uh, friction surface as some of the others I'll put details of all of these in the description Right, here we go, the car's jacked up. Don't know whether you're gonna be able to hear anything at all, but I'll uh, give it a try. I suspect that you're gonna just hear the brake disc uh, touching contact noise against the pads, but let's try again. So what I'm hearing there is the sort of higher pitch noise of the pads touching the disc and then underneath that there's a rumble and that's the wheel bearing and that's what I am going to try and fix. So let's start in the usual way. The car is jacked up and supported on axle stands. Let's take the wheel off. 17 mil socket for these. So with the wheel off straight away we can see another little job that needs doing. <laughs> so uh, I think that can be fixed in the short term with some cable ties, longer term that might be deemed a bit of a bodge but for now uh, I think we can probably cable tie that so look out for a separate video on that little, uh, on that little extra. Let's move on to what we came here to do. So first thing to do is to loosen off the brake caliper. It's a 13 millimeter bolt with the end of the pin being a 15 so you can counter hold it to stop it rotating. So it's the same at the bottom here. Again, the years of rust mean sometimes the, uh, the 15 needs a bit of encouragement to get it on there. But these bolts shouldn't be too tight. I think the torque setting is 35. So they shouldn't be too tight at all. 
We've got new bolts with the uh, with the pads. It'll definitely be easier if you actually take the handbrake off. Well done, Andrew. <laughs> I thought that was uh, a bit harder than it really should be. Still a little bit harder than it should be. There we go. So with the caliper off and in your hand, you can then as long as the rust doesn't stop them, you can see Those ones really are quite thin. They're worse than the other side. I suspect this side might be a little bit stuck. Maybe not actually, the sliders feel okay. Next we have this little bolt holding the disc on. This is a T30 Torx. I think I've lubricated those before because that came off quite easily. In the past with other vehicles, I've had to use an impact, a manual, you know, hammer style impact driver just to just to get the disc off however we may need a bit of encouragement to get that rust broken okay I've got the ear defenders on for this because it usually makes a right old racket Now what's nice about the rear, as you've just seen, is that you can take the disc off without taking the pad carrier bracket off. Now we've not got the disc interfering. Don't know, don't know how well you're hearing that, but it feels stiff and it feels like it's not spinning particularly smoothly. So now it's time to reach for your favourite bodging tools. And now I'm hammering stuff. The caliper is dancing about all over the place so I might just hook it hook it round there so it can't completely fly off okay this is the bit I'm most concerned about so this requires this M18 12 point spline drive XZN triple square, however you want to call it, um, for undoing this bolt. This is really tight, or it should be really tight. Uh, let's see how we get on. I've got a I think it's a 600 mil or two foot. Um, breaker bar. Now what I should have done before I started and what I will stop and do now is take a wire brush and clean up the back of where this bolt is. It's pretty crusty. All right, I've moved over to my phone for this bit. So we'll see in the left of our picture there, we've got the ABS sensor. And that claggy, rusty, horrible hole there is the back of the bolt that we are about to undo. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of wire brushing in there just to see if I can clean a little bit of rust out so it doesn't end up being dragged through all the threads. Okay, cleared a good bit of rust out. I couldn't resist a little squirt of the old WD-40 as well. Not sure it'll do anything, but 
maybe worth a go. Right, onwards. This is quite stiff still. Probably could just about do it with a smaller ratchet. I think I'll probably carry on from here for now. Could also do it with an impact, I guess. Maybe I'm just in the mood for some exercise. Feels like it's getting a little bit easier now, so maybe I will switch over to the ratchet. There we go. It's quite warm, and as you can see, there's rust on those last few threads there. It also had some thread lock in as well, which will have added to the difficulty. There we go. So the back one feels kind of stiff but okay. Front one is running freely enough but lumpy. We'll try and have a better look at that at the end of the video if we can. Time to clean everything up then now. The a factory manual. By the way, if you didn't know, you can pay uh, sort of by the hour to access the Audi Genuine Factory Manuals. I'll put a link in, in the description to how to do that. It's called Irwin. I find it quite useful just to find out, you know, how things should be done according to the factory so you can know when you are deviating from them or deliberately deviate from them if you prefer. Anyway, the factory method is to use a thread chaser to clean that thread out, and that seems like a good idea. Unfortunately, I don't have one of the right size. So I'm going to do what I feel is the next best thing, which is a wire brush on a drill. Making sure that we don't jam it through too far and knacker the ABS sensor. I'm just going to take the loose rust off here. This is just a, I don't know, I suppose to stop any loose bits getting in as I'm, as I'm putting it back. I'm not aiming for it to be super clean and I don't really want to take this anywhere near the ABS sensor. And finally, clean paper towel with some brake cleaner. These have already got some grease inside them obviously inside the bearing, I mean in the in the hole where you're going to put this on. Um, so I don't really feel the need to put any more on. Now the manual, one of the reasons for downloading the manual was to check the torque settings for this. So it's got one torque setting for if it's a steel bearing carrier and one if it's aluminium. Uh, this is steel as far as I can tell. So the torque setting for this is 180 Newton meters and then an angle tightening of 180 degrees. So that's stage one, let's limber up for stage two. I'd say at this point, I think if I was doing this job again, I would probably invest in a longer breaker bar, three quarter inch or an inch breaker bar, and then get one of these uh, spline drive bits, uh, M18 size. 
to, to fit the larger breaker bar. But let's see what we can do. A pitiful 30 to 40 degrees <laughs> so far. Okay, now I move to the breaker bar with the highly frowned upon piece of extension tubing. I always like to make sure that this is fully engaged because if it were to slip, that would be not great. Right, let's see what we can do. Ninety degrees. Well, sorry, dear viewer, my memory card just filled up for the uh, for the money shot, so to speak. So I've. Um, now tighten that, you can see that line's now pointing directly downwards, so 180 degrees angle tightening completed. I think it's safe to say that's bloody tight, uh, but it's, it's all in place, all spinning nice and smoothly. Okay, the final step of the wheel bearing process, I guess, is to just knock in the new dust cap I'm using one of the bushes uh, sorry, I'm using one of the mandrels, drifts, whatever we're calling them from my suspension kit. I'll just give you a comparison of what the new one sounds like compared to the old one then. It spins much more freely. and is pretty much silent. Okay, I've got my mask on for this bit in case you can't hear me too well. So it would be wise to do the top one first, not the bottom as I did, because then you won't be dropping debris from the top onto the bottom. The other thing you might have seen me doing is just checking that these slider pins are sliding freely. These ones are. They feel nice and smooth. There is a school of thought that you should take these apart and clean them every time, no matter what. I am of the view that if they are sliding freely and smoothly, then it really isn't necessary and you can actually run the risk of introducing dirt where there wasn't any. So these are sliding fine, so I'm going to leave them alone. If yours aren't, then you do need to take them apart and give them a good old clean. So next I'm going to give that caliper piston a bit of a clean. Probably unhook it for that. So we don't have the hook getting in the way. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, I think you can. Got some adhesive left over from the backing of the previous pads, I would guess. Just watch the rubber as you're doing that. So now we need to wind that piston back in. Before we do, good idea to check the brake fluid level in the master cylinder because you'll be forcing a load of fluid back that way in the course of winding these pistons back in and if you were already at the maximum you may then end up being over the maximum and making a mess so I'll just do that and then we'll get started with this. The brake fluid looks fine it, it's quite high but fine to proceed it's not going to overflow over the top or anything um, and the car's jacked up at the back so I can't get a true sense of the level until it's back on the flat but it's fine to go ahead with with what we're doing here. So we need to wind back the caliper piston to give space to fit the new pads and new disc. This requires compression and also turning at the same time. 
This is the kit I use to achieve that. This is a fairly uh, fairly cheapo kit from Euro Car Parts, but it does the job just fine. So that, I'll show you it's set up in a minute, but that goes against the, uh, the other side of the caliper, and then you have these various different adapters that go on the end, enabling you to provide pushing and turning at the same time. I've got this 22 mil spanner on here as well, just to help me get it tightened up, but I'll show you more of that when, when we're uh, in position. So that's the, the basic setup, I guess. You can see the adapters are engaged in those two little indentations on the piston. And I've tightened it up by adjusting this so that this backing plate is tight against there. Then it's a case of kind of adjusting this so that it's nice and tight and using that to hold and then with the third hand that you don't have okay so I think it was fairly obvious to all of us that that didn't go to plan did it the intention was with that tool that it engages in these two lugs here and it provides both compression that way and also twisting clockwise and those two things together are designed to push the piston back into the caliper to give us space to fit the new pads. But that wasn't working for this caliper. I moved it slightly, but that's far too much tension. Uh, I bent my piston retraction tool in the process. This needs a new caliper. To be honest, I wondered if it might, because if I just show you the pads, so this is the pad from the other, the inner pad from the other side. This is the pad from this side. You can see there's probably three millimeters maybe difference in the wear between the two of them. And it wasn't getting hot on this side, but that suggests that the caliper hasn't been moving smoothly and allowing the pads to come away from the, the disc. So we found the reason for that, which is good. Now I need to fit the new caliper. So I'm gonna start by just loosely bolting this back into place. Helps hold it still. Trying to get as much of the dust and clag off all these fittings as possible. I've sprayed this one and the other one down here. Just check you can see that. Yeah, that one as well. Sprayed them with WD-40 before I left yesterday. Handbrake cable is moving freely, which is good. So that's that disengaged. Okay, I'm adding this afterwards. Whilst editing, I realized I'd completely put my arm in the way of what I was doing. So what I am doing is using long nose pliers to press on the plastic tabs on either side of the handbrake cable collar so that it can be withdrawn back through the bracket and released from the caliper. That's loose enough. Because the cable's quite thick and because it's clipped just out of shot, it doesn't really want to move very much. So uh, actually what I probably should have done <laughs> was do that before. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, this is probably gonna be controversial for some people, is to, uh, is to clamp the brake line. The, uh, the, the factory manual method is to depress the brake pedal, hold it, hold it pressed down, so closing off the master cylinder ports so that we don't have brake fluid leakage. But that still doesn't stop it leaking out of here, so um, this is my method of doing that. I know I'm not the only one who does it this way, but I know some people feel very strongly about it. So, using some mole grips, 
with what I feel is just about the right amount of compression with some tubing over the ends obviously to stop to, to widen the contact area over which they're, they're pressing and also to stop any pinching damaging of the, the tube from the of the line from the sharp edges. Now we move to an 11 millimeter line spanner and let's just see if these are going to play ball or not. Yes. That one is. And that one is as well. I don't particularly like the way that line was twisting a little bit there, but I think if we're careful, it'll be okay. All right, let's have a go at this spring clip now. Didn't have my compression force quite tight enough to stop the dripping. Let's check our replacement caliper. Looks good to me. I'm just going to check it against the car that these mounting holes are the correct distance apart because that would be really annoying, wouldn't it? Looks good. Okay. I was trying to get it to turn two flats at a time rather than one, but no, still not spaced that way around either. Let's give this a bit more of a clean. Checking no crap in that hole, there shouldn't be, but you never know. I'd really like it if this would move a bit more freely so I could start it off by hand just to feel a bit more confident that it wasn't cross threaded. I've lubricated it a little bit, but I suspect it's the plastic coating on the lines.
Right, I'm just going to go and clamp this in the vise to do this bit because it's making it harder than it needs to be, me holding it and trying to screw it in. Right, that was so much easier just to get it started. You can see it's spinning nice and freely in there, so no concerns about that being cross-threaded or anything. Okay, that's nearly tight. It's not completely tight. I've deliberately left it with a bit of movement because I suspect we'll need that when we come to this because you can see that that, ho that line isn't lining up completely square on with that bracket. I've plugged the end of the brake line just with a, with a plug that I've got from previous brake work actually, just to give this a bit more of a clean to make putting it back together a little bit more straightforward, particularly that groove. Just seeing there if I could force it into position to get the clip on and I think I probably will be able to I'm just going to clean up the clip Final tightening of these two. I'm going to see if I can get the handbrake cable in with the caliper in situ. Just to make it a little bit easier or quicker. Yes, I can. There we go. Okay, I've got the pressure bleeder set up with some fresh fluid in. It's connected up down there, just disconnected the level sensor and obviously removed the cap there. I'm gonna pump it up to about 10 PSI, not very high. Before I do that, I'm gonna let off the clamp on the flexible hose to the new caliper. At the caliper end, you'll see then I've got my uh, drain bottle hooked up here. It's just hanging just out of shot here on the spring. It's got some fluid in it already. Let's let these off then. And this is a 10 mil. Got bubbles starting to come into the reservoir of the bleeder bottle. That should mean we've got some fluid on the way.
There we go. Finally, I think we're about ready to fit the new discs and pads. I've not done that very tight at all because you really don't want that to be seized. So these pads have got these um, non sort of, uh, sort of anti-vibration pads on which are sticky so I'm going to get them in position then peel the backing off then put the caliper on hopefully in one smooth movement without making any mess so I'm using some plasti lube after some not very extensive testing at all well I have tested like probably three or four different ones in my own uh, you know, in my own work and stuff, I found this one to be the best. I'm not plastering it on, as you can hopefully tell. new bolts that came with the pads. So you need to compress the springs on the back of the pads in case that wasn't obvious. Thank you. 
the torque setting for these is 35 newton meters but due to the special way they're set up you can't actually get a socket onto the bottom one and I don't have a torque wrench with um, ring spanner ends on it so I'm doing it the, uh, the manual method shall we say let's use a torque wrench for the top one shall we at least we've uh, at least we're 50% right Okay, I'm just going to pump the brake pedal a little bit now, see how it feels. Okay, that's everything seated. Handbrake feels good, brake pedal feels good. Double check for leaks. And we don't have any of those. That is, all, that is also good. Okay, I think we can probably put the wheel back on. Oh no, we can't. I've got to do this little extra thing. I'll do a separate video on that. So we've got the brakes back together. Next step is just to put the wheel back on and torque up the wheel nuts or wheel bolts that's 220 newton meters if you're uh, if you're interested if you like that sort of thing and then after that time to take it for a test drive so the driveway behind me is on a hill so an ideal opportunity to test both the brakes and the handbrake uh, the brakes were fine the pedal felt really good the handbrake you could tell it wasn't biting that well on the side where we'd replaced the caliper so with the car on the hill i held it in in the, on the hill with my foot on the brake and then operated the handbrake a few more times uh, and that improved things so that helped the self-adjustment process happen and it's it's now really good it's good as it was before in fact it's better it feels like it's moving more freely which also suggests that the caliper was stuck before doesn't it so another thing to remember is when you've done a job like this you won't get full braking efficiency straight away so follow the manufacturer's guide on how to bed the pads in. Uh, I think the general consensus is don't be too harsh on them uh, for the first little bit of driving if you possibly can. But once they're bedded in, they'll be absolutely fine. I've had the opportunity now to drive the car at speed as well, so 60, 70 miles an hour. And particularly when you're on nice tarmac, which let's face it is pretty rare in this country. I don't know how it is where you are if you're watching from other parts of the world. Uh, when you're on nice tarmac, the difference in terms of the road noise is substantial. It's one of those things where you don't really realize how noisy it's got until you fix the wheel bearing and then the noise is gone and it really is lovely, much quieter. So I'm really pleased with this job. Bit of a shame that uh, it took longer than anticipated with having to replace the caliper, but it needed doing. It's quite a common problem on these cars. We could tell by the fact that the brake pads were so much more worn on the side where I replaced the caliper than the other side that something wasn't quite right. The slider pins were fine because uh, they can be a common culprit and the pads weren't jammed onto the, onto the sliders either. So that wasn't to blame either. So it was the caliper sticking. Now it wasn't sticking enough to get hot if things stick really badly you can feel it in how the car coasts and you can also smell the burning smell when you get back from a drive there was none of that i am the sort of person that would notice that type of thing especially because it was on the driver's side so you'd kind of walk past it when you uh, get out of the car as well anyway although it wasn't that bad it wasn't right either so good to get it fixed that brings this video to an end then i hope you got something useful out of it thanks very much for watching and i look forward to seeing you for the next one Bye for now.